You're watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, every week, uh, we're bringing you conversations with the Kentucky men's basketball team and staff for an update on the squad. Here's Keith's interview with associate coach Tony Barbie, sponsored by Burr, the official shared mobility partner of the University of Kentucky. Well, Coach, we've had some fun getting to know the players, but uh, getting a chance to also know some of the coaches as well. I I'm just curious if you can think back to when you were younger, who was the person that you remember putting the basketball in your hand, and do you remember what, what kind of was going on and, and back when you were young? Well, being from Indiana, you know, a basketball crazy state like Kentucky, you, you, when you're uh, born, you're put in a crib with a bottle of milk and a basketball. So it was, it was my dad. He was, uh, he was an athlete. Uh, growing up, he played high school basketball with Oscar Robinson um, at Chris, Christmas Addicts in Indiana, and he went on to play football uh, at Tennessee State, my dad. So he was, you know, big into athletics, and uh, he was always my coach on all my youth teams. So, you know, my dad got uh, me and my three brothers started into sports, and that's where it all happened. Did you play other sports besides basketball when you were growing up? Well, you, you, at that in that era, you played them all growing up. So, you know, up until – High school, I played everything, football, baseball, uh, did it all. And uh, I just, you know, when I, I was this height, I'm 6'6", six, six, and I was 6'6", six, six at the end of the eighth grade, I figured out, you know, basketball was going to be where where my future was at. So that's when I got to high school, I just concentrated on that. Maybe aside from your coaches, you know, uh, who were some of those influences that, that you looked up to as you were growing up, like, like these guys have so many that are in the NBA now? I was always kind of a student of the game early on, so I used to study – you know, when I was playing high school, I would study the other high school coaches in the area. Um, I looked up to my high school coach. Um, he was a great man, great leader. And then obviously uh, Coach Cal hadn't played for him. You know, early on, he had a big influence on my, uh, on my life, not just, you know, uh, professionally, but personally as well. What kind of player do you think Cal was back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> to hear him tell it, he was really good, but... You know, I never got to see much, any tape, any tape of him, uh, but he, he, you could always see he could shoot it when he would shoot around with us back when I was playing for him. He could, he could really shoot the ball. Now we always ask the players, uh, you know, do you know much about the guys that are coaching you? You know, who, who talks the most about their game? I'm wondering if you can guess who, who they, for the most part, tell us talks the most about their game. Since it's my interview, I bet they're talking. Price said me. <laughs> <laughs> they they do, yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, what, you know, that you are you just trying to give them an explanation on how to do something some way, and and all of a sudden it just comes up your game. Not not necessarily. It's more so. You know, I'm the the only guy on the staff who played for Coach Cal, so you know that that's it's more so the mental side of, um, you know, what he's looking for from each individual player when he's coaching them and kind of being that translator for him because I, you know, I had to go through it. That was a long time ago, but I still remember those days and I think I can help them, uh, you know, be able to be effective as a player uh, in what coach Cal is looking for on the floor. I always have good to have that go between. Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, Georgia the other night. Uh, you know, lead down the stretch, falters, you'll lose it on the last second shot. Just what are you seeing from the players after that game? Uh, and how they reacted to the loss? Well, they're, they're disappointed because we're so close. Um, you know, it's a young team. We, we're young in key, you know, places. Um, and, and we just got to be more consistent down the stretch. I mean, we're, we're guarding pretty well. Uh, we're getting the stops last few games, holding teams in the 60s. With this team, we thought we'd be able to get to the high 70s and the 80s. So we just got to figure out our offense and get some, uh, our, as a group, we got to start clicking. And we got to get some individuals playing to their strengths offensively. So when we do get those stops, we can go down and turn it into points on the other end. I mean, when you think about it, you just played your 13th game. I mean, does it come down to the fact that really that would have been your first SEC game? I mean, you didn't have those early preseason games to go through with this team to help them figure things out before you get to league play? Well, yeah, Keith, it's, it's, it's been a, a very strange year for every team in the country. Um, you know, when you, you miss – the preseason, we didn't have our typical summer development uh, because of COVID. You didn't have your typical preseason. Obviously, you didn't have your two exhibition games. You didn't play those those non-conference guarantee games where you're able to tinker and work on some things and build some confidence within your team and some individuals. 
it's not to make an excuse, but with a young team this year, every young team around the country that has the lack of experience we do is struggling and, uh, and trying to figure it out on the fly. But we got good kids. Um, they're hard workers. Um, they work hard in practice. Um, they care and mean something to them to put on that Kentucky uniform. So at the end of the day, we, as it's a matter of time before it clicks. We just hope it's before we run out of time. LSU up next, some more good guard play and Cameron Thomas and uh, Javante Smart. Uh, just as you look forward to them, what do you see from the Tigers? Well, they're explosive offensively. Um, they're a team that can mismatch you on the defensive end of the floor because they don't have traditional post players, 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot. They don't have that on their roster this year. They got a fantastic point guard, Javante Smart, who's been around, seems like now, for a long time at LSU. Experience. Uh, Trenton Walford coming back um, as a first-team All-SEC guy. Um, so they're, they're a team that can score, and we're going to have to do what we've been doing on the defensive end, but we're just going to have to be more effective offensively. Coach Barbie, thanks for your time. Good luck against LSU. Thank you. All right, coming up next on BBN Tonight, we'll stay with Kentucky Hoops. Jack Goose Givens of the UK Sports Network joins us to talk about tomorrow's matchup with LSU and more. We'll be right back.